This is Cowboy Shit with Ted and Wacy. Episode 24 is brought to you by the Canadian Finals Rodeo in Red Deer, Alberta, October 30th to November 4th. It's a week-long celebration of everything rodeo for the bold, the rebellious, and the wild at heart. There will be events on and off-site. Get your tickets now at cfrreddeer.ca. This is episode number 24 of Four Cowboy months. Shit Ted and Wacy. Yeah, I just we're was, doing it. I just sprung it on you there. Do it live. We're doing it. Hey, it's not live, but we're doing it. Yeah, we're just taping it. It's Monday night, Calgary, Alberta. The sun went down today at like six o'clock. I hate it. Holy crap. Winter is back. I feel terrible. The sun's down already. I hate it. We've made it back to the season we began the podcast on. We're already at week 23. That's three weeks until we turn one year old. Man, our anniversary no, episode is going to be episodes. Heater. Three episodes till we turn one, not three weeks. I was a little off there. Yeah. yeah. Three more shows. Four if you include this one. That's kind of neat, eh? That's crazy, man. It's Almost crazy got a year down? The, it's crazy how fast the year has gone by. Isn't it? Yeah. Lots, lots has happened. Life happens when you podcast. <laughs> yeah. Podcast naked. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of naked. Whoa. Yeah. So some shit it's went little, down little this A little bit weekend. of uh, entertaining a little bit there yeah. in Edmonton. For those of you that don't know, PBR Monster Energy Tour, Edmonton. Had a streaker. And it wasn't just a streaker. It was like a few minutes of streaking. He had like a full... It was like a rhythmic gymnastics routine he had <laughs> in the arena. Like he had a... He was on the shark cage two different times. Yeah. Lost his glasses. Doing flips and losing his glasses. And yeah. And he, uh, we just read the story. He was charged for uh, public mischief and public indecency. And it was all because he lost a bet to his friends. I like what goes through your head to make a bet that where you would have to end up streaking. Well, I mean, it's probably not far off of the bets that happened to where we end up riding the mechanical bull at Ranchman's. Like, it's probably not that Yeah, far but off. I would do. I would get on the bull <laughs> at Ranchman's a hundred times before I even thought about going streaking. <laughs> Especially at a place like that, like this. Ugh, I don't know. I can't figure that. I can't wrap my head around that. Oh, man. I wouldn't want that many people to see my bird. No. Just flopping around out there. Need a telescope to see <laughs> from the leaders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, so, that was quite the deal. So that happened. That's got to be a PBR first. Thinks I think it hasn't happened very much. Full, I don't think full it's full on very, naked, full on naked streaker. I don't, I don't had think, people in the arena. Yeah, we yeah we had a guy try and like jump over the fence and take a shirt off in Abbotsford a couple years ago, and mm-hmm. yeah, it just didn't really fly. But yeah, so that was what happened our weekend. Hopefully, you guys had a good weekend too. But, Crazy uh, times. I was in Swift Current CCA finals that week and the week before we were in Abbotsford. Since we've had the show, we did uh, the cutting in Calgary and Abbotsford went well. Jer- Jared Parsonage won the event out there. Rolling. He's, uh, he's rocking. And um, what else? We well, got what the bull, the bull riding in Edmonton itself. They rode like 18 bulls, 17 they, bulls. They rode they? 17 bulls in the long round and another four in the short round, which might also be a PBR Canada record of there some sort. Don't Being know. Bull Don't know, but it Good was times. pretty impressive. Also, the Riders CCA won finals again. Yeah, this Riders won and CCA finals. The uh, at least ten bull rides of over eighty points at the CCA finals. Nice, that's year. a good week. Yeah, I was really impressed. Chad Hartman was eighty-seven points in the last night. Like, mm-hmm. made a hell of a ride. It mm-hmm. was awesome. Yeah, I seen the video, but that was a great bull ride. Oh yeah, Amazing. super impressive. So Chance rode real good. The guy Chance Switzer. Chance Switzer Shout won. Out to him. TJ Lepke did good. Welcome to the club. Um, and those are rodeo guys. Like, I see them moving on someday to the CPRA. Not oh, right yeah. now, but at some point. And they can work both ends of the arena. Yeah, which is also pretty impressive, too, to ride bulls that good. Like, we're going to have some good-looking uh, all-around talent here in the next few years mm-hmm. in the CPRA. And in a year, actually, you know what? Uh, Jake Gardner got the invite to the CFR after Brock Radford ended up turning down his qualification to go to the PBR's Velocity Tour final. So Jake Gardner, actually, we thought that the all-around title was finished, but now since he's in, he can go and still, if he wins enough money, he can be the all-around champ of Canada. Because he's trailing he's gotta, Luke G at the moment. He's got to pass Luke G. He's got to right. win a couple thousand bucks. And he'll be, be the all-around champ. Which can so. be done. Pretty dang cool. Like Jake, how about Jake? First CFR has got a chance to win the all-around. Like that's, that's pretty handy. Pretty darn cool. Yeah. It's got to go there and twist a few bulls and yep, be exactly. right in the thick of it. Hopefully, hopefully he gets, gets it done. Well, there's lots of cool storylines heading into the CFR. Yeah, there is, eh? The Larson bros. Yeah, all three making it, hey? All three and are in there. In three different rough stock events. So mm-hmm. there's been three brothers in one event before with the Mylans going and the Bulldogging. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Tyrell in the saddle bronc, or in the bareback riding, Kane in the bull riding, and he got in because... Londart. Lonnie West turned out of the CFR. So mm-hmm. those guys go to them and get their count in at the rodeos and still have to turn out, which mm-hmm. is kind of wild. It's unfortunate, yeah. Yeah. Also over the weekend, big weekend, big week it just was here, but... Canadian Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame had their induction banquet on the weekend. Nice. That was on Saturday as well. They had a poker tournament again on Friday. 
Shout out to a friend of the show, Donnie Johansson, won the poker tournament two, did? two years in a row, back to back. Damn. Did you get some pretty good coin for winning that? Not pretty nice buckle. Even better. He gave it away. He brought, he's probably got a few of those he's kicking won, around, I'm he's sure. He's won some of them. He told me the other day on the road that his buckle from the George Paul Memorial was insured for like $8,000. Really? That's like the George Paul De- yeah. like Del Rio. Del Rio, yeah. That's he, awesome. He won it in 1978, I think. That's cool. He won like $8,000 at the time. And he won- went to the NFR and placed in three or four rounds in the same year and won like three grand. That's crazy. Like he won, like in today's money, he won like fifty or sixty thousand at at that George Paul. Like it was huge. That's plus a, crazy. Plus an eight thousand dollar buckle, which is pretty wild. That's badass. Yeah, hmm. didn't know that. Yeah, podcast goes out episode number twenty four on October twenty fourth, and that means that we are less than a week away from CFR forty five and Red Deer. Holy! And the Getting podcast close. this week. Thanks again, CFR forty five, presented by Ram, October thirtieth to November fourth in Red Deer, Alberta, Westerner Park, and the NMAX Centrium. It's almost CFR time. It's going to be a good week. You pumped? I'm excited. I go. I'm I got to go. Actually, so when this podcast airs on the 24th, the next morning, I got to go to Brandon for the MFR. M-F-R. Oh, this ain't no rodeo. This is the MFR. Yeah. The Manitoba finals. So good time. You're going to have a heck of a time out there. Love As Brandon. As usual. It's one of and my then, favorite cities in Canada. It's going to be going to be a dandy. And then I fly home Sunday and then Monday morning, we're in Red Deer to set up a boot booth. Boots. Slinging boots. Slinging Say boots. Say that. Five times fast. Uh, slinging, boot boot, slinging boots, slinging boots, slinging boots. No, set up a boot booth. Set up a boot booth. <laughs> nah, that's not that hard. <laughs> so that's what got coming up. And the, today on the show, we're going to welcome Canadian Finals Rodeo qualifier, Canadian champion, Roland McFadden. We'll be back with Roland after this. You're listening to Cowboy Shit with Ted and Wacy, brought to you by the Canadian Finals Rodeo, October 30th to November 4th in Red Deer, Alberta, the new home of the CFR. It's a show you don't want to miss, so make sure you get your tickets now, cfrreddeer.ca. This is episode number 24 of Cowboy Shit with Ted and Wacey, brought to you by the Canadian Finals Rodeo in Red Deer, Alberta. Canadian Finals Rodeo is presented by Ram Trucks this year as well, Wacey. Did you know that? Did not know that. Right to get down. myself a Ram truck. Write it down. You need to know that for your radio gig next week, man. But what's, what sponsors the bull riding? I don't know. I just know <laughs> Ram Trucks presenting sponsor. Right okay, send me an email memo. <laughs> <laughs> Our guest this week is the number two man in the team roping this year in the, on the head and side of things. He's a 2015 Canadian champion, and he's never been stung by a bee. It's Roland McFadden. Hey, boys. How's it going? <laughs> Not too bad. You've never been stung never, by a bee? <laughs> never been stung by a bee. I'm 32 and 0. Fucking take that. How do you get, your, how do you get around that? <laughs> man, I think they're scared of me, but I don't know. If I'm terrified at this point, if I ever do get stung by one, I'm going to have like an allergic reaction. So. You might die. 10 out of 10, do not recommend getting stung by bees. <laughs> I got yeah. attacked weed whacking once and it was not fun. <laughs> oh, jeez. I got my girlfriend carry EpiPen around now just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Back pocket. I don't even know where to start here. We just had a really good conversation off the air and I wish we would have recorded some of it. It was fun. <laughs> oh, we could pick it all back up. <laughs> I like People uh, say I talk too much. People say you talk too much? I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's talk CFR first, man. This is, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know what CFR this is for you, actually. I didn't I didn't do much homework, not going to lie. Had some That's shit fine. going on at home here. Just, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a big week. <laughs> been a big week. It's Monday. We're all trying to Just going through some shit right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just going through some shit, so. Sorry, I didn't do yeah. homework, but I knew it would be cool. Always good. Yeah, I know. It it's my ninth trip, actually. Damn. Ninth trip. And your yeah. consecutive trips? No, I uh, ate in a row. I made it my first time in 2009, and then I missed it the next year, and I've been there every year since then. Okay. And uh, obviously the highlight would be winning the whole shittery in 2015. Yeah, that's for sure the highlight. Lots of highlights in there, lots of lowlights too. But, yeah, winning the whole thing, yeah, winning go-arounds in, yeah, in Edmonton was always highlights. But 2015, miracle season. It was great, so... And it just it just kept rolling that whole year. I yeah. went to Houston and Ariad after that. Yeah. And I roped with Tyrell Foiling and we made the finals at Houston and like it just like couldn't do anything wrong until the next year. <laughs> then we didn't have a good we didn't have a great year. We ended up making it again, but this wasn't as ideal. But fifteen was the best. Best one so far, but you still got a long like you can team rope to your like a hundred, so like you got a long time to go still. I know, but oh everyone calls me old now. <laughs> Fuck! I remember when I was the the young guy. Like everyone's like, I'm young, and then now we went pick the steers for the CFR in Pinoka. The, the calling me and Jerry Bueller old. We're like, we, you guys are you guys are young. We're not old. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> no, I still got a few. I still got. A, I don't know. You got I a few know. spins I, left in you. I got a few, yeah, but but it's not fun anymore. I'll quit doing it. But I'm just, and I think winning is fun. Yeah. So I mean, as long as you're winning, it's 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 easy to keep going. And the guy I rope with now, Devin Wigmire, he's he's on rails. So I told him when he cuts me, I'll probably quit because <laughs> <laughs> you'd be heartbroken. <laughs> I won't be heartbroken, but I'll just like be done. And then his horse is like he can't live without mine. So I'm like, so if you cut me for better, I have a shitload of money. Because they have to buy my horse, and then I will quit. Oh, jeez. What's it like being a team roper and, like, breaking up with your partners and stuff? Like, that seems like there's some drama. You guys have to, like, give boxes of stuff back to each oh. other. <laughs> Man, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, some guys, like, you'd be better off to take a run at their girl than tell me to want to rope with them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, they would forgive you for that, but if, like, you don't rope with them anymore, it's like, oh, that, who's that guy? I think he's going to win without me. Like, oh. I've never had an issue with it. Like, I really think, like, actually, Bueller and I were talking about this this summer, and it's like, it's not healthy to rope with the same guy, like, for year after year after year after year, because it doesn't matter who you're with, like, you can't be around someone that much and end up not, like, getting annoyed by them in some fashion, <laughs> right? Like, you just can't, you can't do it. So, it's kind of your priorities have to align, your interests kind of have to align. I roped with some of my best friends I used to rope with. And when we, when we quit roping together, it's not a big deal. It, I don't care who you say, you're always like a little put out after, right? Because like usually things don't go well when you're done roping with somebody. So like, well, there's a you want to, yeah, you kind of want to, I mainly just want to prove it to myself that I can still do it. But like, <laughs> hell, like I roped with Tyrell Flowing for three years. He wanted to do something different. It was just a simple phone call. It's like, hey, man, I'm going to do something different. It's like, no, I get it. No problem. Like, we're still friends. And at the end of the day, if you're good enough, you're going to win with no matter who you're with. So you got to put it on yourself. So I've never, some guys get butt hurt though. So, <laughs> <laughs> but never been an issue for me. Okay. Who did he rope with this year? Tyrell roped with Grady Quam. So oh, okay. The young buck. So. But so they both kind of split. Must have roped with different people at some point, just for their money to not add up, eh? Yeah, like Clint Bueller and Tyrell roped to the beginning of the year, and then oh, okay. Clint sold his good horse to Ren Richard. Oh. And Clint kind of wanted to stay home. He was building the house, and oh, and okay. just really really didn't have a horse lined up that that was as good as he probably wanted. And, and Grady was roping with his uncle rocky dallin in the spring and then rocky yeah. was going to rope with dustin bird in the summer so grady didn't really have a partner and he had like seven thousand one. and oh damn so like jeff qualm Grady's dad him and tyrell are really good buddies so kind of opportunity just struck for them to kind of team up there after pinoka and they did actually jeff i wrote to jeff qualm in 2011 at the cfr and yeah. he cut me for grady well, he's going back <laughs> amateur with his son. Yeah, well, I guess that's he's going okay. Back though. Amateur there. It was okay though, but yeah. So they they got teamed up. So and Grady's not that old. Like he's like not even eighteen yet, is he? He's just eighteen. He turned 18. eighteen this summer. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he put one of the younger guys to do it. I think Colton Schmidt's the youngest guy to make it. Yeah. Like he's 17, seventeen. He's seventeen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then win it like a year or two. Then won it like couple, yeah, year. a couple years later. Yeah. yeah, a little shit. So <laughs> 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 fucking guy. Yeah, 2013. That's my yeah, 2013 he won it. He made his first year in 2011. Yeah. Actually, Tyrell Fwelling roped with Colton then. Yeah, that's but right. He, we always say, like, he breaks these young, these young guys in. <laughs> and uh, and Tyrell won his first Canadian title in 2011, roping with Colton. But Yeah, but Levi yeah, won the heading, though. Levi won the heading. Yeah. And i bugged Tyrell about this ever since. That year... Colton was gone in school at the beginning of the year, couldn't go or something to Falkland and Luxton. Yeah. And I roped with Jeff Quam that year. So Tyrell and I flew to Luxton and roped together at Falcon. Well, we won one and one second at the other. Oh. And that was enough that put him over the top to win more than John. And the prick didn't oh, even put damn. it in his season highlights that we won Falkland together. What a dick. In the program. I'm like, <laughs> didn't even acknowledge you. Yeah, you flew over there with you and you didn't even put it on <laughs> yeah. no. This could be, be a reality show like Team Ropers Yeah No I, It's all good but Yeah that's, It's all good for me But I always fuck them about it I'm like It wasn't even highlight for you It was a highlight for me No big deal Just you win Canada And I'll just help out So Yeah Not a big deal Yeah But then you guys Hooked up a couple years later And won it In yep. 2015 so, Yeah I roped with Jeff Qualm And then Rocky Dallin And then I roped with Ren Richard Then I roped with Trent Tunkey 
And then Tyrell and I roped in the 2014 season. We roped 14, 15, and 16, and won at 15. And then the last two years, I've roped with Devin Wigmer. So. Okay. And I was looking at the numbers here a while ago, just tonight, actually, just when we were on the call. And yeah. uh, <laughs> so you guys had a pretty solid year, too, money wise. Like you won, you've got 24,000, one Devin's got 25, six. They broke the season earnings record this year. Uh, but like you guys had a pretty damn solid season, too. You wouldn't have been far off from, from being right up there, too, right? No, we had, we had a really good year. We had a similar year last year. I think we won 25, 26,000 last year, too. So it's been yeah. two really good years. Wasn't too far off. I kind of had a chance to to be season leader the last bit, and I was, just didn't started in the line. It's just the way it goes. But yeah, yeah, I'm super. We we rope good together, and he's almost he's nine years younger than me, but we we get along super good. Got the same interests, shit like that. So it's fun. So, listen to the same podcast, you know. We do listen to the same podcast, the big spit hitting guys. So <laughs> it's going down the road. It's no problem. What we got to have on? What do we got to do better with our podcast? What what do we need to do? Feedback, oh, I think, yeah, feedback, kind of feedback, yeah, feedback, feedback, feedback. I think you just need to get out, like just, just the word to spread more. That's so all I think. Is we need to get like spread the word. Need to get a streaker on our podcast or something, <laughs> go viral. Yeah, you need to, you need to get someone on there. You need to set up like just to set it up in advance and just have some huge blowout on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know what the secret potion is, but yeah, it's a, what I've listened to sounds good. I mean, I think there needs to be more stuff like this for Cowboys because. I feel like a lot of interviews Cowboys do are really dull. You know, like we had a really good steer and <laughs> yeah. horse is good. And, yeah. But who gives and, a yeah. fuck? Honestly, like. No one cares. No yeah. One cares. Who gives it's a shit? The yeah. It's, it's a fun. There's a lot of good personalities in all of rodeo and it never yeah. comes through in an interview because no. like no one ever gets a camera in front of them. So like when they do, they like, they forget how to form words. So. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not for everyone. I get it, but I think there are a lot of good personalities that that don't get showcased. Maybe because yeah. in rodeo, it's kind of like like the, the most time you get the most screenplays at the CFR, and if if you don't for win like at the CFR yeah. Yeah, for a week, if you don't win there, then no one no one, no one knows you. you. Yeah, <laughs> no. And I don't know what the media is going to be like this year. Like Edmonton had some major papers, and they you know it was national spot and as far yeah. as things go like red deer i don't know who's going to show up to cover it i don't yeah, know if the not, edmonton paper or calgary paper or both or none or like i don't know who's going to show up and really cover it now yeah and i'm not sure like i don't know the details on that either but yeah. i i think now anymore it's, it's social media that trumps everything like yeah, i think true i think flow rodeo being there like i think they've done some good storylines at least like yeah, trying to let Katie's people done a really know, good like job. done a good job both letting like people have guys have personalities and they're yeah. funny and and stuff like this, like your podcast, it gets it out there. Like guys have you know personalities, and they're they're not afraid to show it, given the right for them. So yeah, I think just get more hits, more clicks, right? That's what yeah. it's all about. We'll so. just keep we'll just keep putting ourselves out there, you know, just see who wants to listen and whatnot. Probably not going to streak, I think but so. yeah, we're not going to go streaking. We won't put a <laughs> don't yeah don't do. I would advise against. It's not like the guy at the PBR in Edmonton, yeah. <laughs> right? That Don't was, uh, that. did you see the video? I've yeah, seen like. a couple of them. I just saw them tonight when I got in the house. You didn't know what happened until just today? I didn't know until today. I was kind of, well, we had a stag party for a fellow oh. team rail for on Saturday. So, oh. Ka- yeah, Kyle Smith, he's my neighbor. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we had a rope in here. And so I was pretty fuzzy Saturday. And then, <laughs> yes. and then yesterday I was pretty fuzzy. So I wasn't really in touch with any anybody all day and then today we were sorting cows in a neighbor so i've been off the off online a few days have you ever been on the swish at a rodeo and won money have I ever what have you ever been drunk at a rodeo and still won money or st- so hung over yeah. that you couldn't do it yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah i rode my first year i rode in with dale scottapole you learned how to rodeo hung over <laughs> <laughs> I've never been like i'm not good at being drunk some guys can be drunk but like i remember one year at hannah last road of the year i kind of drank beer most of the day <laughs> with with Lo, me and logan hofer were traveling together yeah and he's always a character to begin with and i'm like oh if i never really done this this many beers oh you'll be okay you'll be okay so then <laughs> yeah i went out i went out i had quite a few beers and we're i actually made a good run we're us four seven with rocky Dallin, oh. and we ended up sp- we split second i just never really tried it again yeah for quite a few years and then 2015 was a rough, like it was a great year, but it was a rough year for a couple of weeks there. That was Tyler Thompson's last, oh, yeah. last yeah. year, right? And yeah. Tyler's, a, 
He's a buddy of mine. So he was traveling with me and Casper Roy at the end of the year. Well, we're going to travel the last weekend together, Brooks and Hannah. Well, got to celebrate Tyler. Tyler couldn't get fucked off at the end of the year. So everywhere he's going, he's placing. And I was up Friday night and we partied all night at Brooks Friday night. And oh, got shit. up in the morning. And that was the week Best Plug broke his fucking leg too. No, he got different. married, wasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe oh, that was yeah. the year before. Can't remember. Okay. But. But then, uh, yeah, <laughs> we, but we we just had such a great time. We were drinking beer. We'd all had the CFR made, so it was like kind of worry free weekend for a change. And yeah, yeah. Casper wakes up already still drunk, and he was up in the slack. And Brooks was three seven that morning, and then oh, yeah, three nine. That. Yeah, he was three nine that night. And Hannah huh. just two pistols in the snow, drunk all day, <laughs> and. <laughs> I didn't win shit because I'm not very good, even hungover. So, <laughs> but probably that run in Hannah, that was four seven. I was uh, trying to remember if there's anything else, any other runs where I was just oh, at Morris last year. Me and me and Dev, me and Wiggy, we stopped at Brady Chapels on the way out. Yeah, to Morris, Manitoba. It's on the way, and he's letting us stay. So we buy him a bottle of whiskey, and I'm like, Devin, I'm like, do not give him that bottle of whiskey till we leave because we <laughs> give it to him <laughs> yeah, if we give it to him tonight he's gonna make us sit up and drink it with him so he gives it to him that night stupid uh-oh. so we sit up and drink it with him uh-oh the and whole thing. Just, oh just hung over the whole oh, way no. to morris and next and you're in morris like not a fun drive oh no not a fun drive like muggy and like i remember looking at each other and i'm like man like he's like yeah no i he's like I don't care what we do here. Like, I don't even care. Like, let's just get out of here. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> it's a horrible thing to say. But, yeah, so we go, and our steer's supposed to be really good, and our steer kind of cuts left, and I'm, I don't have my best reaction time. Well, steer cuts left, my horse goes left, and I, like, keep going straight. Like, I almost fell off. <laughs> uh, and we ended up placing at the rodeo, but I almost ate dirt, oh. and I was, yeah. And then the next day, two days later, we were up at K-Day's, that was the first year at K days. Yeah. We won sec we won second there. Yeah. And then we flew back out to Kennedy and placed there. So like that's probably that was probably a good weekend being hung over for yeah. start it. Well and you, and you're old enough, you you get on the two day hangovers too, eh? Wacey just had oh. his first one this week. Ugh. Yeah. Two and three day, like you hit Ugh. you get north of thirty and it is rough. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do it like a guy used to, but <laughs> so I think there was you know what I've noticed in the last couple of years rodeo too. Like there's more money everywhere, and like I think cowboys like are just like any any athlete. Like you hear more things like we're talking before, like spit and chicklets. Like how many times now we're hearing like guys in the sh- guys that play in the NHL are playing hungover. And you know it's eventually going to happen. I don't think I think it's happened to everyone at some point. Yeah. Like I I don't yeah you know, I don't think it ever got done all the time. But damn sure rodeo and like we're traveling down the road. Like anytime you can stay somewhere and have a few beers with your buddies and and let your hair down as a single guy, I mean, you're going to do it. It's the closest we get to, to being in the show. So I, I've noticed the last two years, it's less and less. Like, hmm. guys don't stay at the cabarets. They are going to someone's place. Like, it's, I think I've noticed in the last three years, just a lot more, a lot, lot less of that, really. Or you're like just a lot getting less old. Of the fun. <laughs> Maybe I'm just getting old. You're yeah, the one who's but, not staying anymore. The one, yeah. <laughs> I'm the one who's not. Staying. I only know. I only be. Co- I only know because I'm that guy too now. <laughs> yeah, like like I'm in bed at eleven. Like I'm quite happy. Bring yeah, my, like, I bring my own pillow now. Like just yeah, it's all, yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Are we staying here tonight? No, we're not fucking staying here. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> A friend of mine lives half an hour in the mirror. We'll go there. We would have fun suckers. We'll have to pack in this rig like a hot dog cart. We can all have our own bed. So. Yeah. I want to talk even money at the CFR this year. You bet. Yeah, it's the second year in a row. So yeah. We had, we had it last year too. It's big uh, <laughs> big for us up here. It's been a, I don't know, I think it's been a, not a long time coming, but it's, I'm glad to see it's come around. And I'm, and it's been cool that it's been kind of a whole board decision. Um, everyone's behind it. A lot gets made from it, I think. And some people aren't going to like it, and that's just the way it is. I don't expect them to, but I mean, uh, we're certainly excited for it. Sure happy that there, there's been a lot more support that I people I've talked to than there's been people to, people that, that have an issue with it. So Why the fuck was it ever split? With all due respect. Like, how was it ever? Split yeah, why before? the fuck was it ever, like, halfway? I don't it's get just, that. It's just, it's, I just say up here, we're, like, 
we're like 15 to 20 years behind, right? Yeah, like, really true. And like, if you looked at it, like, if you looked at it from a monetary thing, like from a business, like in just in pure memberships and revenue driven, like I always thought team open was worth it for everyone to, to sacrifice the couple thousand dollars, like would take off everybody else. Like yeah, I could do the payouts for you. Like before it, we had equal money and like to what, if, if we would have had equal money, what the difference would have been, it would have been minimal. Like it just, yeah. it always got, it always got overseen. And, you know, one thing was we as team ropers signed a deal so that we were part of the CFR for the next five, six years, but we had to bring our own money, like part of own our own money. Yeah. And I think that was, it was just good to be in the door and, and we're welcomed and it's all good. And then we just built it up to a point where I think it just kind of became a no brainer after so many years. Right. So yeah. I think it was just, it was a new sport up here, really like it in the PRC, it's, been around for forever but up here it's only been at the cfr since the year 2000 so it's only been there for 18 years it's relatively young so but everything has to come in in its own accord right like barrel racing they they had their struggles early on too and yeah it's kind of just the way it is you kind of gotta pay your dues i guess in a sense and 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 i think i really do believe that with team roping like we had to hustle and when i started you had to hustle and go find extra sponsors and put on schools and put on open or opens and, and go to people's places. And, and, and I really think it's been for the betterment of, of our whole sport uh, as, as an event. Cause I just feel like it's so big. It's so much bigger now up here. And there's so many kids that rope better. Like just look at what Levi and Jerry did win in the world. Like, I don't oh, yeah. think that would have, I don't think that ever would have happened without guys like, you know, the guys before me hustling and, and doing all the work that they did just yeah. because they loved it. So. Well, and speaking of rules, I want to talk about uh, Brock Radford, Lonnie West. They had to go get their count this year, and then you probably know by now, but they both yeah. turned out of the damn CFR now, anyways. Yeah, they both turned out anyway. So yeah, I was telling you before, like I was, I was not, I'm not a fan of that rule. I, I think that rule was put in, and and the it was one of those rules that was never put in, and we never thought about it in a scenario such as this. Yeah, like said, so guys get hurt at the end, and my biggest argument was you know, yeah, the onus is maybe on guys. Like, the way the rule was, it's like, you have to go to 50% of the rodeos yeah. before you get injured. Yeah. And I'm like, well, what if a guy gets hurt at rodeo 36? Yeah. There's still 10 rodeos left. Yeah. He's got 12 rodeos. No, he should have been to 18. Well, if he should have been to 18, why don't we make our rodeo count 50% of the rodeos? Like, yeah. Like, I think it's stupid. I think you. I think there is instances where, like, guy wins Pinocchio, and then gets hurt and says, oh, I was going to go to so many. Well, you only went to one rodeo. Yeah. So you can't tell me you were coming back here. I get that part of it. But I'm like, these guys are getting their count in no matter what. I just think it's ridiculous to make them get off at the gate and put two bullfighters at risk. Waste a bull. Waste a bull themselves. I just yeah. thought. But you know what? It's one of those things. It's a it's a tough spot to be in because when you're trying to follow the rule book, you know, like stop trying to make concessions for this and that. Cause I think that's happened before too. And, and it's been more of a detriment than it's been good. Yeah. So I think mm-hmm. we're trying to just follow the rules and you know what? It was shitty mm-hmm. and it sucked for those guys and it sucked that they're not going to be able to come now, but I think in the future we'll just, we're going to change that rule to where there's something like this won't happen again. It's kind of funny where it's like a rule like this that was meant to have the best intentions. Like you want to have people come to the rodeos and, and yeah. they got to show up a little bit to be able to come to the finals. Like you can't be no offense to Joe Frost here. I'm looking at the standings. He's number three. No, no. He went to three rodeos. He won Pinocchio and he makes a CFR. Like that's not, that's not right. He's got to actually come to show up at the rodeos, go to like, I think we talked yeah. about it already. I talked about it with somebody and we thought like, you got to go to the 10 tour rodeos as a minimum. Like just say it's yeah. those 10 tour rodeos. Like that could be, that could be what the minimum is maybe. Or like, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but. I don't know what the happy medium you know, is. Like yeah. in one sense, it's like, I think at one time it was 15. It was 15. And now it's, you know, the counts 15 now and 17, I think in the barrel race or something, but one half of me, I'm always like, I think if you're good enough, I think you should be able to come. Yeah. But I think true. you do need to support the rodeos. It's just finding a healthy balance. That's good for everybody. Like, mm-hmm. but as for the getting injured rule, I think it was put in with good intentions, right? So someone couldn't come back and say that, but I just think the percentage is too high. Like I, yeah. I, push like 30 percent so if you got hurt at jasper and you'd been to 10 rodeos 
that's but okay. that's okay because that's the 30s yeah the 30th rodeo of the year you've been to 10 okay we'll give you a pass we're now like because we're saying that a healthy guy's only got to go to 15 so yeah like you're healthy you leave it to the end the last 15 we're okay with that but mm-hmm. we're not okay with a guy who goes to three and yeah, and like guys are managing, like guys are like like they're trying to go everywhere they can to make the most money, yeah, and like absolutely. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell somebody where they can and can't go at this point. Rodeo's not there yet, so yeah, it's just sometimes it's it's a shitty thing when the rule book is so big as it is, and there's so many different caveats. Oh like, yeah, how could I ever see this coming? Like yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, true. oh, it's like it just sucks. But I mean, Brock's gonna try to go to the world finals, and yeah. I think Lonnie's gonna be too hurt. So yeah. Um, so, but yeah, it's a crappy deal. I, I, so for me, I just want to make sure we never have to put anyone in that spot again. So, and going forward, I, I feel confident that we will. So, mm-hmm. well, and, and I don't think I mentioned it yet, but for those that don't know, uh, Roland's part of the board of directors for the CPRA, uh, on the day to day, not day to day, but on the higher level s- side of the business of rodeo here in Canada. Um, yeah, you know, I got the target on my back. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, though, I've got another question that I just saw come up through the standings here. Caleb mm-hmm. Bennett chose to go to his circuit finals over the CFR this year. What's up with that? He did, eh? I did. That's what I heard. Apparently, his circuit oh. finals is up over that, and that's why, I guess, Pascal Isabel made the made it. So they had to drop down one. So, yeah. Oh, I didn't know Apparently, that's the enter. case. Yeah, I, did, yeah, I thought the- it was odd, but... The wilderness, like I don't. That seems really weird. He turned yeah, down a chance on like sixty thousand. Especially a guy like that who does so good up here yeah. in Canada. But I mean, seems really odd. Maybe he's. I I think they only count those circuit finals. Only going to count for the world maybe one or two more years. And oh, okay. Maybe he's thinking the chance to go to you Kissimmee, know he's got a good yeah. chance to go to Kiss yeah to Kissimmee. Hmm. So. I guess. Yeah, I didn't. Be. I didn't know he didn't. I didn't know he didn't enter. Yeah, because we were trying. Actually, uh, Diane texted me about it and asked how Pascal got in, and she wondered why Caleb wasn't there. And then she found out it was he went to the, decided to go to the circuit finals instead. So, oh, interesting. I know, yeah. like that's why uh, I know that's why Ren Richard didn't get his count in because he's in the Wilderness Circuit too. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I can't believe he he wouldn't didn't want to get his count in. But I mean, it's just a, at the end of the day, it's a business decision for those guys too. Like, yeah. And I tell people like, like yeah, it's sixty thousand and the chance to win and like really with these guys, we're wondering why numbers are down and this and that. A lot of it's just straight finances. Like yeah. guys aren't coming. The dollar, the dollar is terrible for those yeah. Americans. So once you get tax, the dollar. So you win a thousand bucks up here. Once the tax come off it, and then the exchange, it's actually like six hundred American. Jeez. Like it's just really. I really think it's just coming down to finance. Like, can't afford to come hmm. up here as much. And even if so. they win a bunch at the finals, they really don't get to take much home, do they? I guess because after so, that, yeah, they like get say, a big ding off of it. Say, yeah, say he doesn't say he doesn't win sixty. Say he wins twenty five, which is still good. Well, that's really eighteen. And yeah. then when he gets taxed on it, it's like fifteen. So it's like okay, so he can win fifteen thousand clear American, or he can go to circuit finals, which he could probably win ten if he won there. Yeah. American stay home and then still get a chance to go to Kissimmee. Yeah. So I think I think that's what weighted those guys' decisions. Hmm. I know the, I know the Columbia River circuit like they got their circuit finals changed. Hmm. Oh, because January. it's over top of it. Yeah, but oh. the Wilderness couldn't because they were into the building in Heber for another year. Oh, but I think okay. I think you'll see them change their date. Okay, okay. I want to ask what else is coming rodeo wise down the pipe. Like I know you can't share certain things with the board, but like what do you think's coming yeah. up rodeo wise in Canada? What's new? Uh, what's what's in the pipe? I think this Maple Leaf circuit, you know, being a circuit yeah. for the PRCA, like I think that's a I think it's gonna be a good thing for Canadians. Like I've always thought for years that, you know, all the all the dollars we generate for the PRCA and every rodeo up here is a PRCA rodeo. Yeah. Like every pretty well every single one. Like they already are one. So really, that's just another opportunity for guys to have a chance to go to Kissimmee, you know, to uh, to the Ram National Circuit Finals, mm-hmm. and never leave never leave home. Yeah, so don't have to go to be on Montana Circuit or don't have to go to Montana whatever. Circuit. Yeah, you yeah, stay home. Stay home. It happened a long time ago. I wonder. Hey, like originally yeah. the Grassroots Finals was supposed to be part of this yeah. whole thing. Like it was kind of something that was in the works, but it never really happened. Eh? Yeah, I know Keenan and Jeff had kind of set up like that, and then yeah. I think just they had some turnover down there, and then we had some turnover up here, and it just yeah. never formed never came into what it was supposed to be. Yeah. But I, I mean, that's, I know there's been some people talk about it and like concerns, like, but really at the end of the day, 
if you want to, if you want a chance to go to Kissimmee, you just, you got to buy your PRCA card. And I think yeah. the majority of guys up here buy their cards. And I, and I think it's, I think it's going to sell more cards. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't cost the committees anymore. It only costs a cowboy an extra 600 and some dollars to buy your PRCA card. And yeah. You got a chance to go to Kissimmee. So yeah. I think it's just a no brainer. It's all early, right? But I think it'll be a separate finals. Yeah. I think it's, I think, I think it's going to include, yeah, I think it's going to include all rodeos other than limited entry rodeos. Mm hmm. Because that's kind of follows the PRCA rule. So, okay. And yeah, I think it'll be somewhere next fall. I don't know exactly where yet, and I don't want to say for sure because I don't know. But yeah, that's okay. I think it's going to be a good thing. I think it'll, it'll take ten or twelve guys. It'll be three perfs, and yeah, it'll. You know, I think it's going to be good. So cool. I think it'll be after the CFR next year. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I think it's going to be. But I think it's going to be. I think it'd be good. I think the only rodeos that wouldn't count would be like Regina coming up mm-hmm. this year, and then like it'd count for the next year, I guess. Yeah, well, it's limited entry, right? It only takes sixteen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's limited entry, and then K days is limited entry. So I think like those would be the only two that counted. Okay, which would it make a difference, right? So. Oh well, yeah, I'm looking at this and just coming back to something actually now too, and I'm wondering like, with how much money you guys got invested in horses and trucks and trailers and fuel, like. Do you make money at this eventually, or at this? Do you make anything at the CFR at the end of the year, or is this just for fun and just for the glory and the good times? Like what? Well, it's, it's for it's for the it's for the fun for first and foremost for me. But I yeah, like I don't think anyone up here like rodeos for a living. If you just stay in Canada roping, like yeah. I, I don't think you're making it as a living. Like I have a job. Lots of everybody else has jobs, and I. But I think like anymore now, like team roping has become an industry. Yeah. You know, like training horses, like these rope horses are worth 20, 30, 40,000 us. And, and mm-hmm. if you can do it every day and if you can get a couple of those every year, I, I always said, when you make the CFR, you means you pretty much broke even. And this year, the last couple, if you went over 20, you're, you're probably making, you're probably clearing 600 to a thousand a month every year you rodeo up here. Yeah. Like when you're making that much money and then everything you win at the finals, it's any sort of revenue you might see. And but it's not, it's really not that much revenue when you got to buy a truck and a trailer and feed your horses. Like it's, you're, yeah, you're just like, talking about travel and entry fees pretty much. Tra- yeah. Basically like really, fees, right? and, fees and fuel and yeah. traveling anymore. Like it's six, seven, 8,000 to go up and down the road. And then, oh, yeah. you know, you need, you need a truck, a trailer anymore. You need two badass horses. Like, yeah. Like you do it all on paper, it all sounds fine. Like, yeah, I, I, you know, you sell one for forty five thousand, but then you buy one for thirty five. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like it doesn't really make <laughs> sense sometimes, but but it's fun. Like I say, it's fun. I love it. Like at the end of the day, I've been really lucky in my career. Like have big hits at the CFR where you win twenty, twenty five, thirty thousand dollars, and it does yeah. pay for some shit. You know, like yeah, it's, it makes the winter better, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes the winter easier and. uh you get a good place to work that doesn't mind that you do it a little bit. You need the odd Friday off in the summer. And yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it made the down payment on my house. Like I used to, I used to snowmobile and do all sorts of shit. And I was never going to, never going to pay for a down payment on a house, riding a snowmobile. So yeah. It's a hobby <laughs> that you can get your money out of it. So okay. There's some real money to be made. I think at the CFR, you win 50 oh, yeah. grand there. Like that's, that's big. That's time. substantial. It's yeah. big. You know, even winning 20 is pretty solid. Yeah. There's can not- you buy one? Yeah, you buy one horse once, one good one for forty once. You know, yeah. hopefully you get five to ten years out of them. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it makes some money. It, then. it makes makes some money off it. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely think it pays for itself more than it ever did. If like, you're winning, there is, as long as you're winning, if you're winning, as long as you're winning, like, as long as you're not a guy that to, goes to thirty-one rodeos and wins three thousand dollars. Yeah, like that'd be tough. Like, yeah, that'd be tough, tough for sledding. me. I've never been never been in that situation. And, or thirty-seven, and you make fifteen hundred. Yeah, like it's that's, that's right. you got to have a real love for it, like and yeah. but I think too, like some guys stick it out like that and they do that for a few years and then they get callous to rodeo and competition and get good and then they you know they make it one or twice once or twice and that's you know then you see them kind of disappear and that's good enough for them that they reach their goal and they yeah. carry on with their life. So yeah, that's true. It's oh. hard though. Oh yeah, I gave up. I tried it like one time. <laughs> As I tell everybody, I said, I tried everything else. I'm just better at this than the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to laughing here. I want to talk about your craziest story from the road. Oh, man. That you can Crazy get away with story. without putting anyone in jail or getting, I can put anyone getting yourself yeah. in trouble. Ruining, yeah. ruining anyone's lives. Ruining any lives, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to ruin any lives. 
I don't want to ruin anyone's life. I'm yeah. trying to think why is I always listen. I listen to these pod, I listen to these podcasts, and I'm like, how can these fucking idiots not think of a story when they ask them? And now I'm like, now you know, now you're one of the idiots. That's I'm you. An idiot. <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't think of anything over ten years of rodeo, and that would be absolutely hilarious. And I've rodeoed with some funny fuckers for a lot of years. <laughs> like, like Clark, you ask any team rope, any like Clark the Curl's the biggest card ever, and like that guy did some just ruthless shit to me in the day oh this is a pretty good so we're at high river one year i'm rodeoing with him it's like my second year rodeo on yeah 2009 we're like having a great year we're both gonna make our it looks like we're gonna make our first cfr and that was back in the day i was saying like nobody really parties like they used to anymore like me and clark would we rode in with dale scott a little bit and clay white and like we would enter for the functions <laughs> like we didn't for the best part. Like, so like every year it's like okay we need to be in high river saturday night it's my hometown rodeo the cab that night's unbelievable so clark and i enter for saturday night we make a run we're placing i don't know like spirits are high right so we get in the beer gardens and a bunch of buddies there and it's, we're having a great time and uh clark he likes to stir shit and he loves to make my life a living hell. So he knows a couple of, he, he sees across the beer gardens, this girl that I was dating that I recently broke up with oh, like no. a month before. Oh, no. And like, yeah. And it's like, like she's a nice girl, whatever. We're never going to go anywhere. So we broke up. Well, he sees her and he, and he just goes right over to her. And like, I look over and I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, why is he over there talking to her? Like he's over there and like, like they're having this heart to heart conversation and like all of a sudden after a while like I see her shed a tear and I'm like and so like then she leaves to go to the bathroom and I'm like I'm like oh. over I'm like what man what the fuck are you doing like, <laughs> and he's like he's like oh he's like oh you're so fucked and I told her that you're lost soul and you still love her and like, you just don't know what's what going dick. on in your life and I'm like you are such a prick like, <laughs> you're such a prick so I yeah, it, like I have to dodge that bullet the whole night though. So I end up just getting blackout drunk. Oh no! And Clark also knows that I walk in my sleep. Oh wow! Right? Oh, so that brothers. night, well, I, yeah, I pass on the trailer down on his couch, and he's a veteran. He walks his trailer so no one comes in. So <laughs> middle, this is like four in the morning. Yeah, I wake up still drunk, and I'm walking in my sleep, and I'm I guess I'm banging on the door. He says. So he's like, he's like, what? And I'm just like, oh, like I can't speak, and I'm banging <laughs> on the door. So he's like, he's like, he thinks this is a great opportunity just to kick me loose. And I remember oh, no. this year. That oh was, no! Oh yeah! So he opens the door. He kicks me out there in my underwear. And I'm just, I don't even, I don't remember none of it. I swear, yeah. I don't remember shit. Yeah. He says, like, he goes back to bed. Three hours later, he wakes up, and I and I just <laughs> open the door. It's seven in the morning. The sun's up. He's like. He's like, yeah, you just open the door and you curl back in. He's like, you had like horse shit on you. And you're covered in dirt. And like, for all I know, I fucking slept outside for a couple hours. Like, <laughs> I wake up and I'm like, what in the hell happened? And he's like, oh yeah, you had to piss at four in the morning. So I just turn you loose. I'm like, you frick. Like twice, one night, twice. Asshole. I just oh my God. I'm like, I need a shower. Like, Good thing he yeah. didn't live too far away. Oh, yeah. Well, I had to go to Sunday the next day and, of course, oh, didn't win shit because I felt terrible. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but he, he, got, he, he would do stuff like that to me all the time. He oh, would pull gosh. shit like that on me. But he would get me. He put me in the most awkward situations and then just sit back at a distance and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Uh, that was a pretty that was a pretty good one. Uh, so many though. I think you could write it. I think every cowboy that's gone a long time could write a book about the like the fun times that he's had. Like Yeah. For what we could get away with. That's probably that why nobody's done with. it. Would you read the Black Dog Cowboys, like Luke Branquino's book? Yeah. I, I haven't read that one yet. That's a boat is on the edge, I think, as you can get. So. Really? <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm gonna go buy yeah. it on the on the Amazon right now. Get it on the Amazon and get it shipped to the house. It's it's not a bad read. I read it years ago. I can't hardly remember it, but I was like, holy shit! Like they're telling everything. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Wow. I got I got to check it out. I tried reading uh, Fred Whitfield's book, but it was written so horribly I didn't get through it. Yeah, I haven't I haven't read it yet. Like. It's too bad it probably wasn't, if you say it wasn't written good, because those guys have more stories than Walt Disney. They just need the, someone yeah. to put his, it down on paper. His story was good. It just, like, I couldn't follow the book. And maybe I was yeah. drunk. I don't know. But, like, I just couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't, read, I couldn't <laughs> read good. 
could have been. Who knows? You gotta you gotta tell us what your definition of cowboy shit is. My definition of cowboy shit, man. Was this this is your this is your thing on this is your thing gotta, gotta our staple we thing. we have to ask you because last week uh, we talked to the PRCA CEO George Taylor and he's a little bit religious I'm told and I, he, <laughs> he I sent him the questions beforehand and he said I don't know what what this cowboy crap thing is like he didn't even say <laughs> shit. <laughs> So I was afraid to ask him. So then I get a, oh, a message from my friend, a call from my friend Casey Duggan, who works at the PBR. And he said, what the hell, man? You forgot the best fucking part of the show. That's your thing. And, and I was like, well, here's what happened. And he's like, "Gosh, ah, fuck. You got to ask him still, man. It's on the list. You got to do it. So <laughs> what's with this cowboy poop? I was just, uh, <laughs> this cowboy, cowboy poop. poop stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, if I had to say what, what cowboy shit means to me is like, we're all, we all compete against each other, but yeah, we're all just a, we're all just in this together. I think if you're to be cowboy shit, you got to be one of the boys and willing to sacrifice maybe something that's not in your best interest, but it's going to help one of your boys out. And I feel that sort of karma is what comes around. And I feel like when that karma pays off for you, that's some good ass cowboy shit. And when it doesn't pay off and you've kind of been a bad fucker and you're not for the boys, that shit comes up, it comes back and bites <laughs> you. <too. laughs> oh, that's what I think I like cowboy it. shit would mean to me. Just, you gotta be out, we're out here we're for the boys if you're not willing to help your buddies out I feel like that shit always comes back around so. that's true we didn't even get to, work. we didn't even get to the time where you were in the truck and everybody wanted to beat me up we haven't even got to that yet <laughs> well that's not even that's not even a good story thanks for looking out for me though I appreciate it <laughs> uh, I wanted to look out for you I didn't want everyone to hate you, so. they still did but it's okay they got over it yeah, I think or they maybe water, they didn't it's whatever water water under the bridge there's been so many things oh These yeah guys gotta have a short memory yeah, so. exactly. Okay, well, are you, are you guys gonna be up at the be up at Red Deer? Or what's well, you fun? know, we might make an appearance. We'll be we hustling. We might might go there. I think we're I'm on a, the radio. We're doing the the CFCW deal because we got a face oh, yeah, for that's radio. Right. You, yeah, you got, that'll be good. Yeah, it'll be fun. It's gonna be on the rural radio in America. I've seen well. that. It's gonna be in, in America. We're yeah, in the big Everyone. time. It's gonna be awesome. Everybody listen, everybody listen to the CFR and dead and deer deer red red deer. Dead rear? They won't, be able to say it. <laughs> yeah. they won't know what the hell down there. They won't so. know what the hell, exactly. I'm pumped. I think it's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. We'll see you there, man. I'll be up there Monday morning. You, you'll yeah, probably gotta, be there for the Monday night, too, eh? Yeah, I got to be. I got to actually go up Sunday night. I got okay. meetings Monday oh, yeah, morning. Right. Yeah, I've been on the on the board and been on the CFR commission this year. So oh, awesome. It's been, Lots it's been a lot. Work. Yeah, it's been a lot. So yeah. I'm ready to just go there and compete. Going back to Red Deer, I haven't been back there for a rodeo. 2007 FC final. Oh, wow. I was, yeah, I was young, right? Like 21. Like, oh, 21, didn't okay. Shit. Yeah. Didn't give a shit about nothing. Like, yeah, no didn't fucks Didn't ever to see give. a big picture. No, zero given. Yeah. Going to Billy Bob's and like, you look at the wall of like all these guys who have gone out of their way, which now is things that I do, like give a picture saying thanks for your support or yeah. they sponsor going on buckles. Well, I get the bartender because I've been there every night all week, Sunday night. And I'm like, give me a pen. And then she's like, why? And I'm like, because I'm signing this fucking wall. I've been here all week. She's like, okay, yeah. So I go on the wall and I sign it. Around this one corner, I go, to Billy Bob, thanks for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just drunk, right? Just anger. I sign it. A bunch of guys sign it. Like, I wanted, so I wanted to go back. Like, maybe it's still there. I got to go back and see if it's still there. That's awesome. That's like Conor McGregor. What do you do? <laughs> Yeah, I want to. I want to take this opportunity to apologize. Absolutely, nobody. <laughs> With all due respect to everybody, <laughs> but fuck everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, jeez, um, that's that's guys, gonna be a hot topic. Guys, dumb. You yeah, to... guys, dumb back then. Just and she let me like she thought it was hilarious. Like people oh, signed wow. the wall, so I freaking did it. Oh, wow. I think somebody said like it was still there like a couple years ago, but oh, maybe wow. they renovated it now. Maybe it's not there anymore. But you have to yeah. update us. Oh, on, on the next show, we get back to you on whether or not Roland McFadden's autograph is still on the wall in Billy Bob's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stay tuned it's next fun. week for the yeah, full recap. I, I remember it being legible, but it probably isn't. Oh, <laughs> this is my favorite time of the year. We got two or three guys that come over and practice. Uh, Casper Roy and Tristan Woolsey and then Devin and my neighbor Kyle Smith, my buddy, and we just kind of grind it out and have a couple beers every night and just get, get fired up to run at you know 11,000 a night. Hell yeah. Awesome. Hell yeah. Well, this has been uh, Cowboy Shit episode number 24 with Ted and Wacey and our guest this week, Roll McFadden. Thanks again for being on the show. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Hey, boys. Thanks for having me. All right. Yeah, we'll see you. Thanks. 
You're listening to episode 24 of Cowboy Shit with Ted and Wacy. This episode is brought to you by the Canadian Finals Rodeo happening October 30th to November 4th in Red Deer, Alberta, where the best rodeo competitors across North America are coming to us for a world-class competition. Make sure to get your tickets today for the 10-day celebration at cfrreddeer.ca. Man, that was a fucking fun episode, eh? That was like one of our best interviews of all time, <clears throat> I think. It was a lot of fun. Thanks again to Roland McFadden for being on the show. My belly hurts. From Never laughing. been stung by a bee. 2015 Canadian champion. What a life to live, hey? Not getting stung by. Have you been stung by a bee? Oh, hell yeah. Maybe it's a not, wasp. It's not good times. It's happened. It hurt. Mm-hmm. So we had a pretty big interview, so uh, we're going to keep this one short. What's going on? Pro Rodeo, NFR is coming up. Scott Ginther's number two in the world standings after winning the All-American Finals. In the Bulldog, and he's number two in the world for next year already. So that's neat. CFR coming up. Going to be a good one. Yeah, not far um, out. If you can find some tickets off some Get scalpers, you should go. And even if you just can't go to the rodeo performance, you can... I'm sure there's... If you want to go bad enough, there's going to be tickets. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Well, and they got that, that thing in the other building. Though. Yeah. So if you want to watch the rodeo on the big screen next door... Come and check it out. Come watch on the big screen. And uh, there's a new article out. Just wrote it lot the other day. Top five things to do in Red Deer during the CFR. Nice. Free pancake breakfast every morning. Come say hi to us. Come say hi. To, we'll be around. We'll be around. If you want to come talk, shoot the shit with us, we'll be around. The trade show. Going to be a dandy. If you need to buy, do some Christmas shopping. It's, cow, it's Cowboy Christmas of the North, people. CFR Red Deer. Billy Bob, is that on your list? Uh, no. The party's going to be at West. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Billy Bob's can fit 300 people. It's not. And no offense to Billy Bob's, but like that's going to be a really tight spot. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, people are going to stay at the at the Westner Park with the bands they got. Well, like the band started like 4 p.m. and they don't stop till. But like you can like you so you can go to the rodeo and just like walk in the same. Don't even have to leave the building probably to go to the party. You don't. And then upstairs is the buckle presentations, which are going to happen every night. They got autographs signings happening around town. So lots of stuff to do in Red Deer. Make sure you're in Red Deer next week. Yeah, if you're Just, not there, you're missing out. And if you have FOMO like me, it's not gonna be much fun. No, you you want to be there. PBR Aaron Roy won in Edmonton. He's got nine hundred ninety one thousand dollars in career earnings. Going to be the next boy out in the PBR to cross a million dollar mark. Could happen by the end of this season. Would that make him the first Canadian on the PBR yes, level? It would. Pretty cool. PBR only, Neato. and it's a million dollars American. So pencil it out right now. He's you know six million Canadian. Yeah, pretty big. <laughs> Pretty big win. So the next episode will be the week of the PBR World Finals. We'll, uh, you'll probably already know who qualified, and we don't really want to talk results. But standings right now, if you haven't checked it out lately, and if, you do, if you're if you still even listening, uh, Dakota Butters, number 14 in the world right now. Tanner Burns got it made. Then you get down to Lonnie West, probably going to be pushed out of, the, out, of the spot, out of a spot there. He's number 34 right now. There's still two events this weekend and the Velocity Finals the next weekend. He's inside by 20 by I guess you could say 42 and a half points right now. Cody Jesus is number 36. Chase Outlaw is 35th, 20 points back. Uh, then you got Marcus Gloria. He's 52 and a half points back. And Brock is 57 and a half in number 38. So Brock's made the velocity finals. He's only got to make up 50 points. Like that's can be done. You easy know, to do. Got to ride a couple of bulls. He's got to win around, place in around. Like he, even if he does good this weekend in Colorado Springs. So, there's still lots of opportunity. I, my bet is Brock stays on a couple bulls. He gets that, uh, you know, probably 35th spot. Lonnie gets bumped out. That's I think that's how it's going to end up being. We'll uh, we'll see. It's too bad Lonnie's got that hurt shoulder, but he'd still be an alternate. So could still be an alternate and might end up going and uh, you know, but to get on to one or two bulls, I don't know if it might be worth it. He might just take the rest of the winter off and heal up the shoulder. Haven't talked to him in a little while. While, but he uh, too bad for those guys turning out of the CFR. But uh, yeah, that's the show today. You got anything else, Wace? No, just get get your ass to Red Deer next week. Yeah. It's going down. This has been episode 24 of Cowboy Shit with Ted and Wacey. Thank you for listening. Please share the show with your friends who will know about it. Hit us up on social media at Wacey Anderson. Yeah. At Ted Stoven. It's only nine letters, people. It's not that fucking hard. So mm-hmm. find, you can find me on the, on the social. We're not hard to track down. Pretty approachable guys. Okay, thanks for listening. Adios. Episode 24 of Cowboy Shit with Ted and Wacy was brought to you by the Canadian Finals Rodeo, happening in Red Deer, Alberta, the new home of the CFR. A wild 10-day celebration begins October 30th. Have you got your tickets? Make sure you do. There are seats so close to the action, you'll get dust in your teeth. There will be events on and off-site that will have you kicking up your heels, so make sure to get your tickets at cfrreddeer.ca.